Hey there, and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial. Let's play. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me. And uh, we're back in our factory here. It's been quite a few days. Uh, I do apologize for that. I've been uh, just been doing some other videos. I've been doing a lot of other stuff uh, in, in my life, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's other stuff to do, uh, too. And, um, and, you know, that's just been kind of happening. So uh, we are back, though. I'm excited to be back, and I, I just killed some bug invaders here uh they came from over this way so i'm sure uh probably this base right here i'm still interested by the fact that they're not attacking this i guess maybe it's just been completely off for a while up to the point where it's just not generating enough pollution for them to uh to really be bothered with that uh one quick note you will notice there was a little green square here this is a button there's a button here to show logistic networks uh, and this is currently showing um, my personal logistics. However, we should probably come up here and defend this before they kill absolutely everything. There seem to be a very large amount of spitters on this map uh, for some reason. Um, I was going to go... Interestingly, I was going to actually go and... Um, go... I was going to go and uh, work on some resource uh, outposting right now, uh, which we will do this episode, but I need to go take care of these bugs, I think, is is probably more important now. We actually have even just one exoskeleton, and it does help quite a bit. We're making our way out here at a fairly decent pace. Now, I would like to put in some lasers. Uh, I hate taking these roboports out, because when you take these out, uh, what ends up happening is that you, you you lose the charge that, that you had. And that's uh, obviously a bit of a problem because when you put them back in, they have to recharge. Now, I don't know if this this was potentially my tank. I probably should have grabbed that. Uh, this is just one base. I don't know if this is generating that large, those large of attacks. I kind of doubt it. I'm sure we don't have any escapees here. Uh, this base is just very barely being hit by this edge of pollution, so I kind of doubt that that's where we're being attacked from. It's certainly possible that that, that the attacks are being triggered uh, from there, but I don't really think so. Uh, okay, so if we head back down, if we recall, uh, we were working on that copper outpost, and that's what we're going to continue to do today. And if we do manage to get that completely set up, I think we're going to quickly work on... Uh, a small iron uh, addition. I don't know that outpost is really the right word because it's actually this one uh, right in our base here. Let's turn off pollution. Uh, it's this one right here, which we'll just very easily belt up. It's actually really quite convenient that we have that in our base. Uh, so we'll just come down here. We do need to eventually remove this additional rail. It will, uh, it will become in the way, so we'll remove that. I suppose I could remove some of it now, but, uh... The bots are actually fairly quick. We've gotten enough upgrades to where they're uh, manageable now, rather than... <laughs> uh, super slow, you know, a term a lot of people like to use is, like, uh... Hair dryer, uh, blow dryer bots or something when they're really slow before you get the upgrades. It's like they're powered by a, uh, a hair dryer or a little fan or something. Uh, they're really quite quite slow and pathetic, unfortunately. But uh, to complete this outpost, whoop, watch the turret there. Complete this outpost, we need a few things. We, of course, need rail, uh, which we do have uh, enough of. This is more than enough for that. Uh, we need a station, of course. And then uh, we need quite a large amount of belt, unless we've already belted the mine. We actually already built all this. So really, the main things we're going to be looking for here our inserters and chests, which we actually have quite a lot of. Um, so we should actually be in a position to just completely finish out this outpost, as far as I can tell here. Wait for our bot to return so he doesn't lose energy and come flying across the map very slowly to us and probably never get there. Uh, so we'll just kind of weave our way through here, hopefully. Uh, with those exoskeletons, we were quick. However, I think the tank is still quicker once it actually gets fully up to speed here. I'm sure what it caps out at. I want to say 50 kilometers an hour, it, it looks like, maybe. Of course, hitting that tree did slow us down there a bit. Okay, so we have this four-lane balancer we built. 
Uh, now, I think... I don't know if I had planned to landfill. Maybe that's why I went back to base. I, I don't think we actually had any sort of landfill built, though. Oh, I did. Okay. We have 355. We technically could get away, I think, with... If we do a, a similar size train, a 1-2-1, one, one, uh, we technically could get away with just building the station right here. And uh, it is quite tempting. We want to leave room for all of our loading and such, but if I even do something like this, for example, and sometimes you will have a situation where you just need to lay something out and then, you know, see how it looks, see how it fits, uh, you know, actually visually in world, and then maybe you have to pick it up, and that's completely fine. And this does leave plenty of room. In fact, uh, this actually leaves more room than I even anticipated. We could do something along the lines of a two, uh, maybe a one four one or two four two. Uh, I, I'm really a big fan of two four two trains because you have the four wagons, which can hold quite a lot, uh, and then on top of that, you have two locomotives on each side, which means the trains are really quite speedy and uh, they, they can just get around the map very quickly and have a very high throughput. Uh, granted, they are quite deadly. I mean, I, I suppose really any trains are deadly, but these trains are particularly fast. Uh, now, if we have, let's see, we have two there, and then we have the four wagons, and then another cargo. I think we, we actually would be fine if we did 242. Now, it doesn't, of course, match up with our coal train. Uh, however, coal is something we need less of than copper or iron, as you might imagine. Uh, and if we're preparing for a later game, uh, 242 could be good. However, I'm not sure, uh, to be completely honest here. I'm not sure how late we're going to take this. Uh, I'm not saying we're not going to take it late, but I am not completely decided and set on taking it uh, this base, this playthrough, into a super late stage. Of course, we will complete the game. We will launch a rocket. Uh, I think that is really only fitting. Uh, but, you know, I mean, really, if we, if we really wanted to, we could do that without even getting an outpost. That would be very slow and <laughs> a bit ridiculous. Uh, but the point being that even just doing a one to one train is certainly sufficient um, to, to launch a rocket, even multiple rockets. Uh, and I, I am now realizing the, the, the reason I did go back in base was probably to get materials to actually build the train. I always manage to forget something. Luckily, we do have, again, these very nice markers uh, to just lay this out for ourselves, even when the train is not built. And, you know, again, this is a very much pretty much the exact same thing we've done up here. Had I put a radar up there, we could have copy pasted that and then just put it down here. But uh, this is this is not really that difficult, luckily. Just two wagons to work with. Alright, so let's get that. And again, reiterating the fact that if you're only pulling two lines off of a four-lane balancer like this, uh, much like we are here when you're inputting as well, uh, you do want to make sure that you're doing it uh, from each side, not just from one side. So doing something like this would not be good. It would just, it would mess up the balancing. It really then wouldn't be balanced properly. Um, so pulling or inputting just um, from both sides, I think is really important. So just make sure doing that if at all possible. Obviously we're pulling three lines, you know, you're gonna have two from one and one from the other, but um, that's kind of unavoidable, obviously. Uh, now, if we grab our cliff explosives, hopefully we can arrange this so it explodes properly. And we can't avoid that. That I'm going to actually make one more just because that little cliff sticking out there is a fair bit annoying. I could pull this back since we aren't actually doing a 242. Uh, but I think just having that space there is good. In case we do want to expand, maybe. And we're going to just... Uh, let's actually this out this way as to not interfere with the balancer there and it looks like I didn't actually manage to power this luckily we do in fact have power poles uh, and this was a situation where uh, you you can actually you can click and drag to auto place power poles as we know uh, but you can do this uh, when actually powering entities and it will make sure that all of them are powered I think I've mentioned this before but if you just click and drag it will make sure you know that 
everything does get power. Uh, this does not always result in the nicest arrangements. If I were to do this on this side, uh, this is not necessarily, as you can see, doesn't really line up or look very great. Um, it is making sure that everything's powered, but it's not lining up with what I already placed, unfortunately. So a lot of times this is why we'll place things manually. Um, and I do get questions about that sometimes, like, you know, why why place them manually when this feature is available? And, and that's my answer, that power poles are one thing that I do very much like to have, uh, you know, symmetrical and even and such, if possible. And doing that auto-place drag feature, sadly, usually, at least in my experience, does not result in that, so... Uh, we now have these guys running, which is fantastic, very slowly, but nonetheless going. Uh, and then they will go into here, and we will want those to actually be stack inserters pretty soon, if not right away, once we get the materials. Uh, now this is a bit interesting. We actually don't even have to curve this. Now that we've removed this cliff, we can simply just connect here, which is a lot cleaner. Uh, I was going to not remove the cliffs, but... I didn't actually realize I could make cliff explosives with what I had in my inventory currently. And this makes things far simpler. We will leave this just for character, even if we had the explosives, I think. Uh, now, again, with these rails, same principle we've taken into account here, basically. Uh, in fact, it's identical uh, because, you know, this train really only needs to go up. There's no reason for this train to go down uh, currently or probably ever. Uh, so we need to bring a track, obviously, to both lanes, though, because this does need to be able to enter this station. And, again, going through the signaling, we want rail signals before any track merge. So this is a merge, meaning we want a rail signal here. And then, of course, we want one here on the other section that is going to merge together. And then here, uh, we want a signal before merge. Now, this, again, this doesn't... You, you can't put a signal here because this is going a different direction. But what we do want is having two signals like this to indicate that this, you know, from here forward is a bi-directional track, single track there. If you don't do that, you know, you could do this and that'll be fine to get in, but then the train won't be able to get out. So it's important we do this. Now, chain signals again before any rail crossing. So this here is going to, of course, be a crossing of a rail. So we want a chain signal. And then over here as well, coming this way, this is a cross. It's the same crossing that we just signaled for, but it's for it's you know it's on a different rail going a different direction. So we do of course need to signal that and put that there, and that should be uh, sufficient for us. Now of course you know we could put signal after this or something if we need to. It's really not necessary, I don't think. Um, I feel like we actually missed somehow missed a signal here. There should be a signal here just because this is in the blueprint, um, but that should certainly be sufficient. So we'll get that going. Uh, now, if we take a look just out of curiosity, uh, this likely is going to be a target of attack. Uh, we have a base right here. This could very likely be attacked. Speaking of attacked, I, I don't I'm really, okay. <laughs> I thought I had, I thought I did have, um, turrets there. In fact, I could have sworn I had turrets there, but uh, apparently not. Uh, so we'll have to go up there and take care of this. Now, if I haven't already, I should automate laser turrets. I think laser turrets would make very quick work of these um, enemies, at least more so than... That was very satisfying. And save ammo. <laughs> um, laser turrets would make, I think, quicker work of these enemies than gun turrets, just because uh, the big biters and spitters have a high resistance to physical damage, which of course is what the gun turrets do, laser turrets do laser turret, uh, laser damage, uh, but of course laser turrets do take a very large amount of power, uh, which we have enough power to power the base, but laser turrets take a very large amount of power. They take, uh, that's a personal laser defense, sorry, uh, they take one and a half megawatts. 1.6 megawatts almost every time they shoot or while they're shooting. That's that's per turret. That's pretty power hungry. You know, if you if you start if you start having a large number of the turrets or even even just a handful of turrets with the power generation capabilities that we have right now, uh, that's you know that's going to be quite difficult. 
So let's see, we need a wagon, we need engines, of course, for a locomotive, for the back end of that train. And then we should be pretty much set. Uh, I think I will make some turrets just in case. Grab some iron. And while we're over here, I think laser turrets are in order. So laser turrets, of course, will require batteries, steel, and electric engines. Uh, we do, or not electric engines, sorry, electronic circuits. Uh, we have the circuits and the steel here. So let's go ahead and see what we can get working here. Uh, now, there is room to place things over here. I did leave this open for that reason. Uh, we could pull off this. It does mess up the alignment here a little bit, which admittedly is actually quite frustrating to me. So I think what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do something like this, I think. I'm going to bring this line out. Just pull straight from that, I suppose. I mean, we could split off. Uh, actually, it probably would just be good to split off, in all honesty. Uh, we could split off afterwards. We'll do it beforehand. Uh, so we really could have placed it here, but again, that does mess up the alignment. And then these circuits are going to come over. And this does get a little bit messy because this may mess up, you know, interfere with anything that's going to be placed in this area. But we can just maybe not place anything here and then just underground these resource belts. Uh, let's go ahead and have an inserted grabbing here and here. And then, of course, we are missing the uh, batteries. So we'll just put those in a chest for now once we have logistic robots up and running, which will be pretty soon. That is going to probably be a next step. It's so one that we cover here in the very near future. Of course, I didn't put a turret down. I didn't have a turret at the, at the time. <laughs> uh, they will kill those miners. Again, you know, this is the same old, same old thing that... I'm working on something over here. I don't want to run over there halfway through finishing this and then, you know, have to run all the way back here to finish it. Um, so I'm actually just, in fact, I'm going to wait even longer. Oh, they somehow, I guess they got in the range of this turret. Yeah, the ammo is used up there. I'm going to go ahead and wait for one or two of these crafts so we can place those down. Uh, now, we have this outpost ready to go. We need a train and then we need a delivery station. The delivery station, uh, I think it would just be smart to probably put it uh, up here somewhere. In fact, I'm tempted. I think we should leave space. Uh, planning ahead here a little bit. I think we should leave space in here for a potential iron train. We do have this iron patch, so probably we won't need an iron train. <clears throat> Excuse me, but just for practice or, or, you know, just, yeah, really just for practice, you know, to, to keep ourselves you know, in, in the groove of, of, you know, practicing these things and making them a habit. Uh, we should leave room for iron drop off here and then probably do copper up here somewhere because, of course, the copper is up here. Wouldn't really make sense in my mind, at least, to have copper be here and then iron be next when the positions of the resource inputs for those are the opposite of that arrangement. So that's kind of my thinking behind that, that we should probably set that up that way. And we will need iron. You can see the one iron smelter we have is really only on about halfway, even though our iron patch is fully tapped. Um, or, you know, it was. Half the miners are now uh, out of resources, so securing this will be a very important next step. Go ahead and make these miners to replace the ones that were very rudely killed. And we can go ahead and place some turrets. Now, laser turrets are not, you know the end all be all right now they of course do different damage which is good uh, but depending on the upgrades uh gun turrets certainly can stay you know stay in pace with laser turrets in fact uh they can sometimes just do more damage than laser turrets the the gun turrets with full upgrades are really really good it's the you know but right now when we're dealing mostly with big biters and spitters uh, or at least a fair number of them having the uh, laser turrets there to just kind of cut through that physical damage resistance they have with their laser damage is pretty important and I did say this was going to happen we did know this was going to be attacked so we can simply just place some turrets down uh, if I had to take a guess I would say they're being attacked from this base right here 
Mm. I'm gonna actually make some more turrets while we build this train. That there. Throw some coal in there. Of course, we don't want to forget to fuel. Uh, I should have made stack inserters while I was back in base. You know, now, I'm not really sure where exactly... <laughs> it's always, you know, sometimes it's always a guess where the biters will attack. Even if we know where they're attacking from, sometimes they just seem to attack different parts of the same thing. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very odd thing sometimes. So, we'll just place these here. That should be pretty safe. Uh, in fact, why don't we just, why don't we just get out of here and just see... I mean, these turrets should certainly defend it unless they decide to somehow go all the way around it. It's a good experiment. Okay, so they did head this way. This was not relevant to me. I believe I was out of their aggro distance there. And we have this. Let's rename this to Copper 1. Just staying in, you know, theme of our other station names. And then we need to go back to base so we can kind of reverse here and turn around. And create a quick drop off and I think that'll be a good place to end this video probably uh, so again we want to leave space for the potential iron again I don't know if we're gonna get there we do have that pretty large iron patch very close we're just gonna belt in but for good habits and just in case uh, we want to leave room somewhere in here for an iron train to come in I think it would be perfectly fine to have the copper train somewhere over here. I'm going to remove these trees because even if they're not in the way right now, they're likely will be. Uh, I was going to maybe put the copper station there, but I'm thinking actually just putting it over here would be better. It's of course you know, kind of like right in the middle of our mining, but it will work quite nicely to come in there. You may need to blow up this cliff though. Okay, so let's bring this over. Our bots are having a problem catching up. Now this is a little bit trickier. Uh, this is a diagonal rail. Uh, the, the signaling all remains the same. All the connection points remain the same. The connection itself is just going to look a little bit different, of course, because we are... Oh, hello. We are on a diagonal rail. Whew, that was close. We got him while he was in the attack animation. I really should re-equip some lasers. Uh, so, you know, this is not the prettiest thing. Eventually, we would have a stacker, which I think I mentioned before, uh, but... So, eventually we would have a stacker and this would be a lot cleaner, but this works for now. Again, so so this may throw you off if you have a situation like this, because even for me at first glance, this did make me have to think, my, think about the signaling a little bit. Uh, the signaling rules still remain the same. The signaling is going to be the same, but just the fact that the angles and stuff are different threw me off slightly. But again, a merge here. Just going to put a signal on each track that are merging together. And then a signal here. But then, of course, we do need a signal on either side here, indicating this is a bi-directional single track. And take our chain signals and before a crossing here. And on that same crossing, now, there is not room to do one here due to how it's curved. However, there's room here, and this is still, of course, before the cross. So we're going to put this here. Almost <laughs> would have had my first train death. Very well known for my train deaths. Usually not when I'm playing by myself. It's usually when I'm playing with others that that occurs. Sometimes by myself, though. Uh, and these are the two crossings, so we're fine there. Looks like that signal did get in. So this is all signaled up. Uh, come in here, and you can see, uh, once you kind of get 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 in the rhythm of the things, get your signaling down, has set up a few outposts, and kind of know the general way you want things, you know, set up in, you know, for your trains... Um, it, it actually becomes quite quick how how easily and, and quickly you can set these things up. You know, in just a matter of a few minutes here, we're going to have a drop-off station all set up and ready to go. Of course, the bigger the trains, the longer it's going to take, just because you have more things, more items to place down. Uh, but overall, it's really quite quick. Now, we do have robots. We could actually be copy-pasting this, uh, which really probably would be smart. A lot of times, I do forget. A lot of times, to be completely honest with you, I do forget to take advantage of that. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I'm a very, I'm a very, I, I, don't, I don't really know the words. The, a very odd and also frustrating kind of lazy uh, sometimes in the game where 
I'm here and I have the materials for the most part and I start building by hand for a second and then I'm just like, well, by the time I s zoom over here, copy, paste, copy this, paste here in the robots build, I could have just built it by hand, which in some cases is true. In a lot of cases, that's not true. And I'm just tricking myself. And it's, like I said, it's kind of a laziness that that it is, does not result. <laughs> I think I'm taking a shortcut, you know, by just building it by hand since I'm there and already started. But a lot of times that's not actually the case. So that's why I do that sometimes. Um, I think we're good to go here. We need the stuff for the cargo wagons. But otherwise, we can just merge this. And I think I'll actually come around this cliff or we'll just get stuff to blow it up here. Uh, so the copper should be good now interestingly actually our copper is doing better than our iron But again, the iron is very simple to set up matter of You know plunking down some miners here and then just Zipping a belt up through here and we're good to go probably all of 10 minutes or so or less uh, But I think this is actually a good stopping point. Uh, I can finish that unload train off camera I think you know you've seen the other unload station. I mean that one basically is done except for the train itself uh, so not really anything that would be missing, you know, that you would be missing there that's of importance. And then we'll set up the iron and we can continue on our way. Once we get the iron and copper in, we should be good for, you know, a good while. Uh, infrastructure wise, we can start, you know, going, going farther with the actual base building and what we may want to do there. Uh, and what we probably do want to do, I personally would like to get Power Armor Mark II. Uh, that would allow us to have personal robot ports and laser defenses, and more exoskeletons. The grid is quite a bit larger than this. So uh, heading down that way, I think, is maybe our next goal. If we go ahead and just quickly take a look here. We have, of course, all the science to do. It's not even that expensive. Um, the expensive part of it is these modules, these 25 module twos. Uh, now, this was changed. This is actually not as expensive as it used to be. Uh, or maybe it is, but it's just easier in my mind. Um, it used to take module threes, which were a bit of a pain to make. Uh, but the module twos actually really aren't that bad. In fact, we could just start producing them now and just let them b build up while we research it and probably be good to go. Uh, the nice thing about this, and I think part of the reason it used to be harder is because the way the tech tree was arranged, uh, is you could get Power Armor Mark II really before you even had blue circuits made or made to any decent level at all uh, and and level three modules require blue circuits so that was difficult and then you weren't really making modules because modules weren't required in science at the time uh, but now uh, things are arranged that they did improve the tech tree quite a lot and this being one of the results of that where by the time you can even research this you have everything you need to make it already being made for the most part you know like this requires electric engines and blue circuits and low density structures. And of course, since this requires yellow science to make, you already have those things being produced in your factory because you needed them for the yellow science, or at least components of the yellow science. So uh, this is really a lot easier now. I th and I'm just kind of stuck in the <laughs> memory of it being harder because I played that way for a very long time, definitely longer than I played with it this way. Uh, so I'm still getting used to that. And it's a very nice change because that's in my mind how a tech tree should be. Uh, is that you, you know, once, you know, you go to unlock something that hopefully you would have already made the things needed for or most of the things for it via something you unlock prior to it, which in this case we did. So this is really nice. It actually won't be that difficult to make. It's expensive. Nonetheless, you can see the ingredient count down there, but it won't be as hard as I'm maybe anticipating as long as we get our resources. That's why I want to get the iron and the copper in because uh, you know, it is expensive. We do need blue... We'll, we'll need a second fusion reactor, and the blue circuits for that are, you know, of course, expensive. We do want to add in a co second copper smelt. You can see by the time the copper gets down here, there really isn't much copper. Um, so that is just some things we need to take care of, but won't be that difficult. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. Uh, I will try to get these released more often. I would like to. Like I said, things just kind of came up. I had some other video things I'd I wanted to do, the base tour and all that and I was doing the science battle uh, which was a lot of fun I do plan to do another one so that's going to do it as always thank you so much for watching I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable and if you did a like is much appreciated so other people can find this 
uh, video and the playlist and, and stuff in general and hopefully find it helpful too. If you're new to the channel, uh, welcome and if you're not subscribed already, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the content I'm putting out for Factorio here and I believe that'll do it. Any thoughts and questions, leave them below and until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.